Well, hello, it's Beards and Bangers, and today I'm not going to be driving a car, I'm going to be giving you a bit of a history, and then we're going to have a walk around my new MG TF. Welcome to Beards and Bangers. So as you may have seen in a video from a couple of weeks ago, I went down to Devon to collect this beautifully presented X Power Grey MG TF 160. Before I walk you around it, I want to actually give you a bit of a history about the, um, the, MG, the MGF and the MGT. The MGF was arguably the last true MG. Now, I have nothing against badge engineered versions. I own three MG ZTs, as you know, and uh, you know they're based on the Rover 75, and I really admire the, the 1980s um, MG efforts, the, uh, the MG Metro, Maestro, and Montego. But the MGF and the later TF were never sold on a different mark. It was only ever sold under the MG brand. So in a bit of a first for beards and bangers, we're just going to delve into, not massively, but a bit of the history as to this particular car. Prior to the launch of the MGF in 1995, the last true MG to roll off the production line was the last of the MGBs in 1980. And that decade has seen the ending of British Leyland, the forming of Austin Rover and the takeover in the late 80s by British Aerospace. The group was really keen to have a genuine MG on the roads and work began in secret on three different options. Uh, but of course they were quite cash strapped so it took a little bit longer than that. Now the Austin Rover Group shocked the world and possibly themselves at the International Motor Show in Frankfurt in 1995. They presented a concept that just oozed machoism. Um, it was a four-wheel drive prototype and it boasted the hairy chested um, V6 engine from the Metro 6R4 and it was dubbed the MGEXE. Now you may be thinking this is a far cry from what we know as the MGF and TF but do bear with me. As you probably realise, the EXE never made it into production. The cash-strapped Austin Rover Group being unable to realistically afford a car with a lightweight aluminium chassis and plastic panels. So with the reality of this sinking in, work started in earnest on an alternative. The first such design was called the F-16. No, not the renowned American fighter jet, but something more similar in shape and style to what we know today. The key difference of the F-16 is that it was front wheel, front engine, front wheel drive, uh, and it was a concept, and it was a far cry from the EXE setup, let alone what we see with the MGF and TF we know now. The one thing we can say with the F-16 is the shape is now more familiar to the one we now know and love. And this car was never put into production as there was so much uncertainty over the financial situation of Austin Rover. Matters were still not on an even keel after the disrupted days of BL, British Leyland, in the 1970s. What the EXC and the F-16 did do, however, was to keep the MG brand alive. Maybe not so much with the public, but internally at Austin Rover. Things took a turn for the better, however, in 1988, when British Aerospace brought Austin Rover suddenly the picture looked very different. In 1989, the Austin brand was dropped and the company, under its new parentage, became known as the Rover Group, the name it would trade under until the rise of the Phoenix Consortium in 2000. I won't cover the BMW Phoenix era here, but we all know what happened there. Armed with financial certainty and realising they needed to compete with the new exciting Mazda MX-5, Rover Group formed a department called Rover Special Projects and was allowed to push ahead with a rose design of their own to take the Japanese on. And so, in the mid-1990s, we had the MGF, which was given a major overhaul in 2001 as the MGTF, and that's what we'll have a little look at now. Yeah, so we have a little look at my beastie here. So yeah, X-Power Grey, it's in... Uh, really good condition. The previous owner, Neil, has really, really looked after it. Um, I think XPG is probably my favourite um, MG Rover colour. Um, yeah, so I put my private plate on, X30 VVC, because of course this being a 160 has got the VVC engine. Um, let's have a little wander around it. So, for those that don't know, the MGF is, uh, MGTF rather, is, is mid-engined. So if we, uh, if we grab the keys and open her up, the old plates in the back there. So yeah, here is 
our engine, so immediately behind the bulkhead, which is behind the driver's seat. We do have a bit of a boot. It's not huge, but it's, it's enough. Um, I've already been shopping in this car to test it out. Uh, we do have a front bonnet as well, still, and we'll try and open that up in just a sec. Yes, we've got a bit of a, a bonnet as well, so we've got our spare tyre. This being the original one, it's never been used. Um, we've got our battery, we've got fuses, we've got the brake servo and brake fluid reservoir. Uh, we've got our wash, washer fluid down there, power steering fluid there. We've got our horn and we've got uh, our ABS module as well. Um, so yes, we have got, we've got a bit of space for our spare wheel, but yeah, you haven't got masses of space in these cars. They are, you know, they really are a sports car, two seats and off you go. Yeah, so inside we've got two um, seats. This this is um, this is full leather. This one, so it's uh, yeah, really quite comfy. Got this slight kind of stippling in the leather as well, which gives it a bit of texture. Um, we've got an armrest, little cubby down there. Um, and we also got a cup holder, and with a bit of storage behind as well. So it's it's you know you've got as much as you can. You've got two speakers behind the. Uh, the seats and then you've got two speakers in the doors um, if we just slide in oh. um, this one's got an Artemark so originally these came with a Kenwood um, stereo uh, and on this um, we've got a, an Artemarket Pioneer DAB Bluetooth all singing all dancing unit which is nice not you know not double din something that's going to cover up um, cover up the uh, the dials and the hazard warning lights but yeah um, Got our controls here for the windows. It's you know everything's really well laid out. Um, the the indicator and wash wipe stalks are straight out of a Rover 200, um, which is fine. And of course we've got our lovely silver dials with the MG logo, um, which look great. Um, we have got a glove box as well. Uh, this is interesting. This is a cubby that's been added. So you'd normally have a blanking plate for the passenger airbag here, which would have been an option. Um, and someone has had this custom made cubby put in here, which is really, really good. Um, you may be asking where, if, you, if you're new to MGFs, you may be asking where the interior light is. You've actually got lights under the mirror. So that's actually on because the door's on. Door's open rather, door's on. Uh, but we've got lights two lights with little switches under the mirror which is quite handy uh, we've got nice little sun blinds as well uh, with this extra flappy bit for keeping the sun out uh, now we can have a look at one of the jobs i've got to do if we look above my head the headlining has completely sagged so i'm going to be doing another video on getting this out and taking this off um, i'm just working out whether it's better to take the hard top off and we'll come back we must mustn't forget the hard top um, whether we take the hard top off or whether we um, do it in situ. So it shouldn't be too difficult to get the headlining out. It's a good one to do because it's, it's really quite a simple headlining, but I do need it doing just in case I take this car to POL um, as a backup option. Um, yeah, we'll need to, need to get the headlining done. Yeah, so the hard top on these was an optional extra. Um, this one is nice because it's actually matching the car. So it's an X-Power Grey as well. I think as standard there, um, they come in black. Um, but yeah, let's just shut this up so we can have a nice look at the, the profile of the car. Oh, I'm going to shut the boot as well, bonnet rather. Yeah, it's a really well maintained car. Um, it's got a bit of a panel gap at the front um, where the bumper meets the other wings, but that's sort of typical of the typical of the mark. Um, wheels need a damn good clean. I'm going to give this car a a good scratch. actually got some work going on in front of the house tomorrow so I'm gonna wait um, before I wash and detail the car because it's gonna get covered in dust so we'll wait for that to happen but yeah we'll give these wheels a really good scrub they're actually in pretty good nick so I don't think they need refurbishing but a, a good um, a good washing will be required um, the brake calipers on these are lovely they're red this one's faded a bit but you have got the MG logo I don't know how well you can see that you've got the MG logo on the brake calipers as well um, and the only other job, aside from the headlining and detailing, that I now I've got to do is, is to put the headlights back to stock. So these are not the original spotlights. Um, did I say headlights? I meant spotlights. So yeah, I'll be acquiring from somewhere a couple of 
um, spotlights and fitting those so there's a bit of a bit of a loom extension going on here so this will be got rid of because the wiring for the um, the OEM uh, fog lights is here but yeah here is my MGF there was a bit of history so there we are yeah a brief brief uh, update from beards and bangers bit of a bit of history on the the TF the F and TF bit of a walk around my new steed um, I'm hoping that we get the 260 fixed fairly soon so do check back for that if you want to see what happens with my MG's ZT 260 190 with the TF with the BRM and if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button we're nearly at the thousand so it's um, uh, the channel is growing all the time so don't forget to hit the like button and please share if you know a mate with cars who likes cars then you know please uh, share it that'll be really appreciated but um we'll wrap this up for now thank you for watching and i'll see you again on the next episode of beards and bangers really soon goodbye